Suffering from a vaginal infection can really be an unpleasant experience which may come with health complications beyond your imagination. There is a lot every woman can learn on how to take care of their vagina, the limits to the hygienic measures implementable in the vagina, what signs and symptoms to look out for and when to see a medical doctor if a vaginal infection is suspected, how to prevent, diagnose and manage vaginal infections. For that reason, this video is not only meant for healthcare practitioners but for every woman out there who wishes to improve on their vaginal health. Hi guys, it's another opportunity for you and you know how we roll here, right? We enjoy how to learn it and we learn how to enjoy it. If you haven't subscribed, uh, you know where the subscribe button is, just go right down there and click on the thing, you know what I'm saying? Why do I keep saying you know what I'm saying? On today's laboratory, we shall be talking about how to diagnose, manage, treat and prevent vaginal infections. This it's going to be a two-part video. And for the part one, we shall be talking about bacterial vaginosis. And we have our reporter who is presenting on site, Priestley Tufon, who will be giving us a heads up on that. Priestley Tufon, are you there? Yes. We are here. We are all here. The vagina is actually home for millions of bacteria out there. Now, the big question is, at every point in time, which particular bacterial species is dominating in terms of numbers and percentage coverage of the vaginal walls? The picture we are all looking at right now is that of a gram-stained vaginal smear showing numerous gram-positive bacilli as seen under the microscope. We shall from now henceforth refer to these gram-positive bacilli as lactobacilli. And for the records, this picture was taken with a smartphone. Check out the description section of this video and you will see the link of a video we did some time ago on how to take amazing pics from the microscope with your smartphone. If you are interested in learning that, just click on the link, enjoy and thank me later. The ideal microbial flora of the vagina should be characterized by a dominance of lactobacilli as these particular bacteria have been shown to play a lot of beneficial roles when it comes to protecting the vagina from other harmful microorganisms that could cause disease. As such, lactobacilli is the kind of bacteria that every woman should be hoping they have down there. However, the degree of protection a lactobacillus can confer to the vagina depends on the amount as well as the particular species of lactobacillus present or dominating in the vagina. Some particular species like lactobacillus inus are weaker as compared to lactobacillus crispatus or lactobacillus acidophilus. As such, Women who carry mainly lactobacillus inus may be more prone to vaginal infections. In other words, some women have security guards or police down there while others have a well-armed military battalion. Based on the Heisen criteria, this picture represents grade 1 flora, also referred to as normal flora. Other microorganisms like Gardnerella vaginalis, Atopobium vagini, Mobiluncus, Peptostreptococcus may as well exist as harmless bacteria and be classified as commensals or normal flora in the vagina as long as their numbers are kept low by the abundant presence or action of lactobacillus. Now this takes us to grade 2 flora. Let's say we add a different type of bacteria here, here and a little more there. This particular bacteria is usually described as gram-variable cocobacilli following gram staining and if seen alongside clue cells, it is indicative of Gardnerella vaginalis. Now, what are clue cells? Let me circle one on our picture. Uh, yeah, that's it. Clue cells are vaginal epithelial cells that have gram-variable cocobacilli around their cell membrane and or in their cytoplasm. The picture we have right now represents grade 2 flora where there is a mixture of lactobacillus and Gardnerella vaginalis but the lactobacillus is still in command as seen by their numerical superiority so this is still considered as normal flora. Now let's say I significantly cut down the amount of lactobacilli that we have in this scenario uh, then I resort to adding more Gardnerella like more Gardnerella here uh, there, there, I put up another clue cell there, I put up more Ganerella here, and I put up... Hey! Don't get it twisted. It's not like I like adding Ganerella into female genital tracts. I'm trying to make a point here, though. 
Okay, as I was saying, what if Ganerella vaginalis finally gains more grounds and outnumbers lactobacilli, leading to a significant disruption of the vaginal microbial flora? Now, this is classified as grade 3 flora and it's a disease state referred to as bacterial vaginosis. Bacterial vaginosis is a complex polymicrobial disorder characterized by the disruption of the vaginal econage resulting in the reduction of lactobacilli and an overgrowth of other bacteria like Gardnerella species, Atopubium species, Prevotella species, Mobilunku species, Mycoplasma species, and all that. I always like to think of bacterial vaginosis as a coup d'etat. Now, imagine that the vagina is a country with a well-structured government and a well-armed military, also known as lactobacilli, protecting its territorial boundaries and ensuring national security. Then BOOM! One day something goes wrong and a rebel group, also known as Garnerella Vaginalis, that has been operating in hiding, finally overthrows the government by defeating the military and taking over the country. Okay, stop imagining, let's move on. Bacterial vaginosis is the most common vaginal infection in women of childbearing age. Some women may have bacterial vaginosis without presenting any symptoms, but all the same, the infection may need to be treated or managed, especially for pregnant women. Symptoms usually include abundant whitish discharge with a foul smelling odor or a fishy odor. Then there is usually general vaginal discomfort and burning during urination. The infection may lead to complications like low birth weight infants, preterm births for pregnant women, pelvic inflammatory disease, postpartum endometritis, and infertility. Now, the next big question is, what predisposes a woman to develop bacterial vaginosis? In other words, what can make a woman move from this to this? Let's highlight a few predisposing factors. One, vaginal douching. Douching is washing or cleaning the inside of the vagina with water or other mixtures of fluid containing vinegar, baking soda, iodine or soap. Some of these mixtures have been packaged and sold in shops. The containers are designed with a tube or nozzle that is fitted into the vagina as seen on the picture. By pressing and applying a bit of pressure on the container, the content is released into the vagina. Unfortunately, the process also dislodges lactobacilli from the vaginal walls and eventually washes them off, thereby giving room for Ganerella vaginalis to conveniently settle in. For the records, inserting your finger into your vagina as a way of cleaning the vagina while having your bath also equates to vaginal douching, which eventually washes off lactobacilli. So, do not douche for whatsoever reason as it simply predisposes you to vaginal infections like bacterial vaginosis. It's always good to be clean, but mind what you do down there in the name of hygiene. Point number two, use, misuse, or abuse of antibiotics. Indiscriminate use of antibiotics, especially the broad spectrum antibiotics, may lead to vaginal infections. Some women have the habit of taking doxycycline or other antibiotics when they start noticing brownish or creamy discharge prior to their menses or after their menses. When the antibiotics reach the vagina where the lactobacilli are found, do not expect the antibiotics to be like, Aww, those are the good guys, let's not kill them. Nah, it doesn't happen that way. Remember that the lactobacilli is also bacteria, and as long as they are sensitive to the antibiotics you have taken, they would also be eliminated by that antibiotics, and this would eventually give room for Ganderella vaginalis to settle in. Aha, I know what's on your mind right now. I'm sure you're like, but Ganderella vaginalis is also bacteria, so it should be eliminated by the antibiotics as well. Um, yeah, you're right. Ganderella vaginalis is also bacteria. But bear in mind that most of the commonly used antibiotics like doxycycline, tetracycline, amoxicillin, ciprofloxacin, and so on have been shown to have poor activity against Ganderella vaginalis. So your chances of killing or inhibiting Ganderella vaginalis with these antibiotics are pretty low. As a matter of fact, bacterial vaginosis is usually treated with metronidazole, clindamycin, or tinidazole and should be taken as prescribed by a medical doctor. Point number three, hormonal imbalance. Some of these hormonal changes occur during menses, pregnancy, and menopause. 
A decrease in estrogen levels as seen in postmenopausal women may lead to a reduction in intravaginal lactobacilli, thereby creating room for Gonorrhea vaginalis and other pathogens to colonize the vagina. The fourth point, the particular lactobacillus species dominating in the vagina. As earlier mentioned, some women have weak lactobacillus species dominating in their vagina and so they may suffer from recurrent bacterial vaginosis. Well, it's not like these women are doomed. There is a solution for that and it's called probiotics. Probiotics are live microorganisms that provide health benefits generally by improving or restoring the gut flora or vaginal flora when consumed. Some vaginal probiotics contain lactobacillus acidophilus which can be inserted into the vagina as suppositories. Certain strains like Lactobacillus rhamnosus and Lactobacillus reuteri have been clinically tried and shown to survive transit through the gut and then successfully colonize the vagina eventually, so they can be taken orally as pills. If taken correctly and for the prescribed duration, probiotics may introduce a stronger Lactobacillus species which would eventually colonize the vagina and reduce the occurrence of bacterial vaginosis. Point number five, a new sex partner. And number six, multiple sex partners. Despite the fit and sit risk factors, I would like to point out the fact that bacterial vaginosis is not necessarily sexually transmitted, especially for heterosexuals. But women who suffer from bacterial vaginosis are at higher risk of contracting sexually transmitted infections like chlamydia, gonorrhea, HIV, herpes, and human papilloma virus infections. Lactobacilli usually protects the vagina from all these STIs as well, so if they happen to be overthrown by Gardnerella and bacterial vaginosis sets in, Chlamydia and all the other STIs will be able to successfully establish themselves in the vagina. A woman with bacterial vaginosis is also at risk of premature delivery if she is pregnant. Some bacterial infections at the level of the vagina of pregnant women may lead to miscarriage. This takes us to grade 4 flora where we see mainly gram-positive cocci which may be indicative of streptococcus. This is usually a call for concern for pregnant women as group B streptococcus has been shown to trigger miscarriage. Not all grade 4 flora represents group B streptococcus but it's good to be able to suspect it early enough and take the necessary precautions especially for women still in their childbearing ages. Most women on menopause may not have noticeable bacteria in their vaginal smears but would have epithelial cells. This is referred to as grade 0 flora as shown in the displayed picture where only epithelial cells are seen. This was Priestley Tufon reporting live from the, 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 I don't know, vagina? Duh! Over to you Kuku and Tony at the studio. Uh, I mean, <laughs> laboratory. All right, that was a brilliant report there from Priestley Tufon, though we kind of had a weird ending. Now, that was just one common example of a vaginal infection. What about trichomoniasis, candidiasis, and of course, Neisseria gonorrhea infection? Well, we can't address all of that during this session. That is why there is a part two for this video where we will be talking about all of that. As of now, I'm a very busy man. Got a lot of work to do. So if you want to catch up with us, just subscribe to this YouTube channel, you know what I'm saying? So that you keep up. Why do I keep saying you know what I'm saying? All the same, just subscribe to this YouTube channel and we shall keep you laboratory. Of course, it's laboratory. Amen. Laboratory.